Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So it seems like everybody's been trying to get into the high performance game in the last couple years, ever since Dart Zone started the trend of release a blaster that shoots way harder than everybody else for the same or similar price of standard Nerf offerings. And everybody's been throwing their hat into the mix, including Nerf at this point, as well as Zuru. This is their long shot. There are now three blasters called the long shot. This, the original long shot, and the one that Nerf made in the Nitro series. This one is interesting, not only because you could do this, but also because this blaster is claiming to shoot 140 FPS. How does this thing work? Let's find out. So this blaster had a lot going for it when it was originally revealed, essentially being a direct budget Orion Lynx, to the point where they literally put Orion on the blaster, but we'll get into the design later. This blaster is essentially just an Orion Lynx, a $200 top of the line 3D printed blaster. And this, you can pick up for 30 bucks. The problem is you have to pick it up at Target, but I digress, we were out there anyways and we ended up finding this thing, which is why I have it, because I wasn't planning on getting this blaster in the first place for a few reasons, which I will get into later. But first, let's give it a fair chance. Let's start with the design. So starting out with the design of this blaster, it is a really good looking design. I think this is one of the most well done and nicely done Zuru blasters that they've made in a very long time, right up there next to the lock blaster and the rage fire. At the same time though, the shape of the shell comes from the Orion Lynx, which is a tried and true design. And the paint scheme, well, a paint scheme is in the skin series, which means it looks very nice and very highly detailed. And of course, both sides. No paint was missed on the other side. And there is an ungodly amount of teeny tiny little details on this thing. I actually cannot believe how many details they put into this blaster shell design. But it really does look insane in person. There is so much going on here that it's hard to wrap your head around it. You really just have to take a few minutes to just look at the thing. It's just like... Damn. There's a lot going on here, and I think that the design really works in this blaster's favor because the shape of the shell is actually pretty simplistic. It's got some design details, but not too many, just enough to make it look good when painted, but also enough to make it look really, really cool when left stock, and I think that's a good thing. I think blasters should be able to look cool when painted or when stock, and this blaster does that perfectly. What about the ergonomics? This blaster's got a main grip, a foregrip, and a stock, which is adjustable and has three different points, but good luck getting it to land perfectly in the middle. Come on. Oh, there we go. I got it in the middle. Surprisingly, I never managed to get it in the middle, but it's always either closed or open, but it doesn't really matter. The main grip is really, really good. It is up there on my list of the best grips out there. It is not too big, it's not too small, it's very similarly shaped and sized and proportioned to the original Elite grip, but without the larger bottom end. So it's actually a very nice grip to hold on to for this style of blaster. As for the foregrip, I think it's a little bit too small, but it definitely works for this blaster. Again, smooth and filleted and very, very comfortable. As for the stock, well, the stock itself is a very nice comfortable stock with a very nice comfortable cheek rest but it's also defaulted at the perfect length for my arm and can be extended to be a little bit longer than the perfect length which actually is a little bit better for this style of blaster because it's supposed to be a sort of compact style CQB blaster so the stock being like this actually works in the blaster's favor and that's one thing that this blaster really has going for it it's not very big most of the time blasters like this have to sacrifice on their performance because of the barrel length because they have to be bigger or they have to be smaller and again sacrifice their performance. This one gets the best of both worlds by being a bullpup. So how does this blaster work? Well it has this adapter on the back so that you can make it take short dart mags and you can just put that right in the back. It's not that big of a deal. You take your magazine in, you put it in, you pull this back, you push it forward, you fire once or it's got slam fire. Now we gotta talk about the prime smoothness because good grief, this blaster has a very, very smooth prime and it feels wonderful. This is one of the nicest primes imaginable. And the trigger pull, very, very snappy, very, very clicky. It pushes in a little bit and then 
Pow! It's got a lot of kick to it, and that's surprising because this blaster uses a direct plunger. It's not using something like the Centurion, which is designed to actually give kick to it when you pull the trigger. This blaster actually just has a huge spring in it, as you can see there. Look at how big that spring is. It is genuinely about this wide, and it's got a lot of punch to it. Gosh, I, I really love firing this blaster. It is a very nice blaster to fire. Oh, but there's there's a few there's a few issues <laughs> there's a few issues we'll get to those later. But first, I want to mention something that's really cool. This blaster has a standard style bullpup mag release in the back like this, so you can just take it from the back. But it also has this little trigger right here. What does the trigger do? Well, when you push it with your thumb, the mag falls out. And that happens with every single mag you put it in. Talon mags, the mags that are included, the mags that came with the Nexus Pro, the mags that came with the Max Dictator, every single mag that I tried with this specific piece in it, and only this one, literally mag drop every single time when you push this switch forwards because it just doesn't have a very tight grip on the magazine. At the same time, that comes at a little bit of a caveat, which is that Talon mags don't seat very well with this blaster, so you can put them in and then literally pull on them hard enough to pull them out, and there's not that much of an actual, like, grip on the magazine when you put them in. As I shall demonstrate, you put the mag in. I'm not touching the trigger, so I'm just gonna put my hand up here. It comes right out. Again. No switch is done. And I can actually show you by taking it out of the blaster. You can see it is fully seated all the way in. It, it doesn't it doesn't take that much effort to pull it out. Now that's not to say the mag's gonna fall out, because again, during my testing I couldn't get it to fall out, but you can pull it out without too much effort. I'm not sure whether to say that's a good thing or a bad thing, but honestly, it doesn't seem like a very good thing. At the same time though, I'd say it's worth the sacrifice just because of how smooth the magazine operation is with Talon mags. And again, if you push the trigger forwards, it mag drops effortlessly. It is a very efficient blaster to use considering the fact that look at it. It doesn't look like it would be that efficient, but it surprisingly is. Now let's get into all the fun stuff to talk about. You remember when Nerf released the Warden and the Warden came broken for like half the people who bought it and actually probably more than half the people and everybody hated Hasbro for it? You don't really see many people talking about the fact that this thing does the same thing. One in three blasters have a cracked plunger tube. You know what that means? That means goodbye barrel seal, goodbye performance. You gotta replace the plunger tube. You know what that means. You gotta take the whole blaster apart, figure out how to take the plunger tube out, put a new one in, an expensive one at that, and then put the whole thing back together again, good as new. Why should you have to do that? You should be able to buy a blaster and reliably use it knowing the fact that it is going to work perfectly every single time. And the idea that that is not going to happen, unacceptable. Of course lemons exist, but this blaster is apparently one of the most notorious lemonable blasters ever. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine releasing something that isn't finished yet? Zuru, you released the Rage Fire this year. What the hell's the matter with you? How come you release this? It isn't finished being built yet. They did finish building this. This blaster isn't complete. The blaster has a plunger tube that was cheaped out and it cracks. Mine still works somehow. I don't know if the plunger tube is cracked or not. I originally thought that it was cracked because of this tiny little marking right there, which I don't even know if you guys can see it, but it's like a little scratch going on in there. It doesn't look like it's in the best condition. But at the same time, it still works. I don't know if I have to replace the plunger tube on this yet or not. I'm sure I'm going to have to because the plunger tube is unreliable and notorious for breaking, but I hope not. Oh, um, also there's a scar barrel. I don't know why I forgot to tell you that, but you can take the scar barrel off and then the blaster actually looks like the Lynx, but the scar barrel isn't built in, so you have to make it longer than the original Lynx. So, I don't really know what to tell you. The blaster's actually pretty large in this state. It's about the size of a rapid strike. 
I don't know, let's get to the firing demo and show you what a circus looks like. Oh boy. All right, so I'm going to try and do all of this in one take. I'm going to do short dart, single shot, then slam fire. Then I'm gonna do full length, single shot, and then slam fire. And we're going to see if it works. Now for slam fire. Now for full length. Oh my god. <laughs> This is real. It it's a squib. There's another one. Oh my gosh, it's awful. I don't think it's gonna survive slam fire. Do I need to say anything else? Do I need to say anything else, guys? Unusable. Completely unusable with full lengths. These darts are all over the floor. They're supposed to hit the target and fall into the dart catch. And yet darts didn't even make it to the dart catch. Countless squibs, countless issues. It doesn't matter if you take this thing off. It just doesn't work. This blaster is limited to half-length darts. Now that wouldn't be a problem on the surface, but the blaster is advertised to work with full-length darts. And no matter which darts you put in it, if it's not the exact ones that it comes with, nothing. Did I mention that the foregrip is really wobbly? Th that's, this sucks. I was, a, I was optimistic about this blaster, okay? I like to be optimistic about my Nerf blasters because when I buy a Nerf blaster, I look for the best qualities in it. Even a bad blaster, I can usually find good things to say about it or at least find some enjoyment using it even if it's less than ideal or there's no real practical usage for it in a war or even if I have to go out of my way to try and find a practical usage for it in the case of the Ultra Speed and a few others. There's really no practical usage for this but I tried to give you guys an option if you ever wanted to use it. This blaster, when you use it, you get the feeling of being scammed. It's the same feeling that you get when you were to get one of those little Tiger handheld consoles back in the 80s and 90s instead of getting an actual Game Boy for Christmas. This blaster feels like a ripoff. It doesn't work. It is a ticking time bomb that is going to eventually break and you're gonna have to figure out how to fix it. In my opinion, that completely removes the whole purpose of these types of blasters. To be able to go down to the store, get a blaster, and just be able to play with it. High performance. You can take this to a war and use it without issue and not have to worry about it. This is a blaster you have to baby. You have to repair it. You gotta worry about it. It's fiddly. It's annoying. It doesn't work. And that's a big problem. I can be, I can be forgiving on things like that, if it was like a large expensive professional blaster that the idea is to take it apart, change the parts out and then put it back together. If a faulty piece comes in the box or there's a piece that wasn't designed the best but there are ways around it, ways to upgrade it, I can forgive them for that. 
but that isn't the case for this blaster. This is meant to be consumer grade, and with a problem that big, a problem where it doesn't work with full length darts and the plunger tube has a risk of cracking, among many other things breaking potentially from everything I've heard, it's not worth a purchase. You don't know if it's gonna work if you buy this blaster. I cannot recommend anybody look at this blaster unless you are a professional modder and you know what you're doing and you're ready to like take it apart and fix it when something inevitably breaks. But if you're just a consumer and you want a high performance blaster, look anywhere other than the long shot. With that said, if you do want to purchase this blaster, I will link it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.